Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The last lecture we looked at uh, two important notions namely linear independence and linear dependence. These are very important notions in the study of vector spaces. We also looked at the notion of a spanning set. One important property of linearly dependent set that we found was that if k is a linearly dependent set in a subspace w of a vector space v then by our scanning fr from the left we saw this process uh, towards the end of the last lecture scanning process from the left we are let us take the linearly independent set to be finite. Suppose we have a finite linearly independent set k then by our scanning process we can uh, remove lot of unnecessary information and get a subset k1 in k such that k1 is a linearly independent set and the subspace spanned by k1 is the same as the subspace spanned by k. So, what this says is that if you have a linearly dependent set you can remove the redundant information and get a smaller set and generate the same subspace that we had. We shall be using these properties repeatedly. Now, the question about spanning set what is a spanning set? A spanning set is a subspace subset of the subspace w such that every vector can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. Now, the question is should every subspace should every subspace have a spanning set? Should every subspace have a spanning set? We are not sure about this and uh, uh, because we are nowhere proved that a subspace should have a spanning set. Now, let us look at this question. Suppose you have a vector space V and we have a subspace w. So, we have v is a vector space we assume that is a vector space over a field f and w a subspace of v. Now, we can think of w as a subspace subset of w itself. Then what is L w? The subspace spanned by this set. We know that L w is the sum smallest subspace containing w, but w is already a subspace and therefore, L w is indeed equal to w and therefore, we can think of w as a subspace as a spanning set for itself we can think of w as a spanning set of w and therefore, there is at least one spanning set for every w. There is therefore, at least one spanning set for w, but are we satisfied with this spanning set? What is a spanning set? A spanning set is like a sampling set. 
So, it is like a sampling set. What do we mean by this? When we say sampling set, it means that by knowing these vectors in this spanning set, we can generate all the other vectors in the subspace. So, when you have a sampling set and you want to take w as a sample for itself, then we are sampling all the vectors and it is not a very good sampling. Therefore, from the point of view of sampling, our sampling set or the so called spanning set must be a subset of w. So, would like spanning set to be a subset of w. Now, if that spanning set is linearly dependent that means, he has a lot of redundant information and therefore, we would be doing over sampling. Hence, a linearly dependent spanning set is like a over sampling set. And we would like to avoid over sampling because we want to do minimal sampling. Hence, we would like to have non redundant information only that means, we would like to have a linearly independent spanning set. This leads us to the notion of a basis. So, we give a definition now let V be a vector space over a field F let w be a subspace of V then a subset B of V of w a subset B of w is called a basis for w if one we want it to be linearly independent that is non redundant information and it should be a good sampling set that means, it must be a spanning set that means, the space spanned by L s must be equal to w I'm sorry, uh, we have used the notation b. So, we will call it as b L of b must be equal to w what does this mean that is every w in w can be expressed as a linear combination of finite number of vectors finite number of vectors in b. So, that makes it a good sampling set we do not have redundant information and by looking at them we are able to take about all the vectors in w. So, basically therefore, there are two requirements the two requirements for a basis we repeat are the following. So, the two basic requirement one is linear independence and the other is spanning that every vector in w is a linear combination of these vectors. Therefore, a subset s of w will fail to be a basis if at least one of the above conditions is violated if at least one of the above conditions is not satisfied. So, therefore, for example, a basis may a subset 
may fail to be a basis by not satisfying condition 1 that means by being linearly dependent or it may be linearly independent but may fail to satisfy the second condition namely spanning. So, or possibly it is neither linearly dependent nor spanning. What is important is it will fail to be a basis if at least one of the conditions is not satisfied. As of now we are not sure whether a vector space will have a basis. So, we do not know yet. So, this we will call it as a remark. We do not know yet whether a subspace of the V will have a basis. Now, we must remember that V can be thought of a subspace of itself and therefore, we can talk of the notion of a basis for V and therefore, we do not know yet whether V has a basis. We shall get we shall make a remark about this question a little later. But to begin with let us look at some examples. The first example that we see let us look at F 3. Now, in this where F is a uh, field we can take F to be R then we get R 3 we can take F to be C we get C 3 and so on and so forth. So, let F be any field and look at F 3 what is F 3? It is the set of all vectors which are of this form x 1, x 2, x 3 column vectors such that the entries are all from the field F. Now, in this consider the vectors E 1, E 2, E 3 the set B consisting of 3 vectors where E 1 is the vector 1 0 0, E 2 is the vector 0 1 0 and E 3 is the vector 0 0 1. Then clearly B is a subset of V such that 1 B is linearly independent 2 B spans v that is l b is equal to v. Why is l b equal to v? Because any vector x is equal to x 1 let us look at this because x belongs to double v implies x belongs to f 3 because our v is now f 3 which means x is of the form x 1, x 2, x 3 where these x j's are in f this means x can be written as x 1 e 1 plus x 2 e 2 plus x 3 e 3 which means x is a linear combination of e 1 e 2 e 3 and therefore, every vector is a linear combination of b vectors and b is already linearly independent hence b is a basis <coughs> for f 3. Similarly, instead of F 3 we can take F n for F n we can take B to be E 1, E 2 etcetera E n where E j is the vector which has all the component 0 except the jth component which is 1 all others are 0. Do this for j equal to 1 to n we get n vectors. So, if we take b to be equal to e 1, e 2, e n where e j's are this then this is a basis for f n. As the next example let us consider v to be the set of all m by n matrices whose are entries are from the field f. 
in particular for simplicity first let us consider v to be f 2 3 that is all 2 by 3 matrices. Then we are going to look at a set b which consists of the following matrices a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 3, a 2 1, a 2 2, a 2 3. All these A's are matrices and what are they? A 1 1 is the matrix 2 by 3 matrix which has 1 in the 1 1 place and 0 elsewhere. A 1 2 is the matrix which has 1 in the 1 2 place and 0 elsewhere. Similarly, we have A 1 3 is 0 0 1 0 0 0 it has 1 in the 1 3 place a 2 1 has 1 in the 2 1 place a 2 2 has 1 in the 2 2 place and a 2 3 has 1 in the 2 3 place. So, we have the 6 matrices and consider these 6 matrices and call this collection of these 6 matrices as B. Then 1 B is linearly independent it is easy to see this easy to check this and L B is indeed F 2 3 what do we mean by this we want to show that every matrix in F 2 3 is a linear combination of these B vectors. So, because A belongs to F 2 3 implies A is of the form A B C D E F because it is a 2 by 3 matrix where all these A B C D E F are in, in the field F. Now, that says I can write A as A into A 1 1 plus B into A 1 2 plus C into A 1 3 plus D into A 2 1 plus E into A 2 2 plus F into A 2 3 that says A is a linear combination of B vectors that means A belongs to L B that is every vector in F 2 3 is a linear combination of this. So, therefore, we have L B is also V L B is the V in this case the space of matrices. Therefore, B is linearly independent L B is V and these are the two requirements for a vector space to have to be a basis and therefore, B is a basis for F 2 3. Analogously, if we now consider all m by n matrices over the field F, then consider B to be the collection of all the matrices A i j where i 1 to m j 1 to n so many matrices for each i and j we get one matrix where a i j is a matrix which is m by n which has in the ith row and the jth column that place 1 and all others 0 ith row and jth column entry is 1 and do this for every i and j then B is a basis for F M M. The next example we will consider is that of the polynomials. Let us look at the set of all polynomials over x over the field F in a variable x over the field F. So, this is the set of all polynomials in x polynomials in the indeterminate x with coefficients 
in f. Let us consider this space and now consider b to be the following polynomials p naught, p 1, p 2, etcetera, p n, etcetera, etcetera, where p n x is x to the power of n. So, p naught is 1, p 1 is x, p 2 is x squared, p 3 is x cubed and so on and so forth. Now, this is an infinite set, we have already seen that b is linearly independent and every polynomial is obviously a linear combination of a finite number of b vectors. That is if p belongs to v that means p belongs to the polynomial space therefore p must be of the form a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x squared plus a k x to the power of k polynomial say degree is k it must be of this form where the edges are all in f. This immediately says that p is a naught p naught plus a 1 p 1 plus etcetera a k p k which means p belongs to L b and therefore, every vector in v is a linear combination of a finite number of the vectors in B and therefore, B is a basis for B. Now, in this space consider the following subspace that is in the space of polynomials we are going to look at a small subspace. Let us say w I denote it by f e x. It is the set of all polynomials which have only the even powers of x that is the polynomials belonging to f of x such that p x is of the form a naught plus a 1 a 2 x squared plus a 4 x to the power of 4 plus etcetera plus a 2 n x to the power of 2 n. So, it has only even powers of x and that is why we call it f e x and this is a subspace and for this subspace 1 x squared x to the power of 4 x to the power of 2 n the polynomial of the even powers of x is a basis for w because they are automatically linearly independent because they are subset of a linearly independent set. So, therefore, linearly independent and as we have seen about the definition of p every p is a linear combination and that to a finite number of these give rise to any p and hence b is a basis. So, thus we have this important notion of basis, but we should keep in mind that we are yet not sure whether every subspace should have a basis and whether every vector space is a basis. But we should remember in again that the two important requirements the two important requirements for a subset S of a subspace w, w is a subspace of b. So, the two important requirements for a subspace s of w to be a basis for w e are what are these two requirements? One s yes, must be linearly independent and two the linear span of s must be equal to w that is every vector in w must be a linear combination of a finite number of vectors in s. Okay. Now, we are going to look at view basis from a different point of view.
consider now a vector space V now we will introduce a notion called a maximal linearly independent set. So, let us say W is vector space uh, over F and W subspace of V and then we say S a subset of W is a maximal linearly independent set if one there are two word adjectives in this one it must be linearly independent. So, linearly independent and two we have used the adjective maximal what does maximal mean it means that you cannot embed it it any other bigger maxima any other bigger linearly independent set that is S is not a proper subset of any other linearly independent set. We can state it also like this that is if S is a proper subset of S 1 which is of course, is in W. So, if, we, if S is a proper subset of S 1 then S 1 cannot be linearly independent that means, S 1 is linearly independent. So, any one any set which encompasses S in W must be linearly dependent. So, the moment you try to make it bigger it loses linear independence. So, that is in a sense a maximal size you could reach for linear independence and the moment you try to blow it up it loses its linear independence. So, we have this notion of maximally linearly independent set that is a set which is linearly independent and which cannot be embedded as a proper subset of any other bigger linearly independent set. Now, let us consider W the subspace and let us say B is a basis suppose B is a basis for W. Now, consider any set in B which is bigger than W. So, let B 1 contained in W be such that B is a proper subset of B 1. Now, B is a proper subset of B 1 and therefore, there must be a vector x in B 1 which is not in B. So, there exists an x which is in B 1 not in B. So, let us call that vector x. Now, since x is in B 1 and B 1 is a part of W, we have x belongs to W. Now, x belongs to W and B is a basis we have started with a basis for W and B is a basis. Now, B is a basis for W it has two properties one it is linearly independent the other one is that it spans W. Now, first we shall exploit the property that it spans W that means, any vector in W is a linear combination of B vectors. So, hence x can be written as a linear combination of a finite number of vectors, finite number of vectors in B. Say the finite number of vectors are u1, u2, ur what does that mean that means x is equal to some alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 plus etcetera plus alpha r u r. Now, this says that alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 plus alpha r u r plus minus 1 times x is theta of the vector space. 
this says that there is a non trivial linear combination of this u and the x vector which gives the 0 vector. It is non trivial linear combination because the coefficient of x is minus 1. So, therefore, that says u 1 u 2 u r x is a linearly dependent set. Now, where is this set? The vectors u 1 u 2 u r are all in B which is also a B is itself is in B 1 and this is also in B 1 and therefore, these vectors are all in b 1 and therefore, u 1 u 2 u r x is a linearly dependent set in b 1. The moment a set has a linearly dependent subset, the whole set must be linearly dependent. So, therefore, b 1 is linearly dependent. So, what have we concluded? We started with a let us go back we started with a basis and then we looked at a set bigger than the basis and then we showed that must be linearly dependent. So, what it says is that B is a basis the hence the conclusion is the following B is a basis for W and B is a proper subset of B 1 which is in W implies B 1 is linearly dependent. This means, I am not able to embed B in a bigger linearly independent set which is precisely what is meant by saying B is maximal linearly independent. Because it is a because it is a basis it is linearly independent and we have seen just now that you cannot put it in a bigger linearly independent set or anything bigger than that is linearly dependent. So, we have the first important observation that B is a basis for W implies B is a maximal linearly independent set in W. Now, let us look at whether the converse is true. Conversely, let B be a maximal linearly independent set in W. So, here is W and here is B which is a maximal linearly independent set. We want to claim that B is a basis. Now, how can B fail to be a basis? So, suppose not that means B has failed to be a basis. Now, B will be a basis if it satisfies two requirements one is linearly independent the other it is spans the W. Therefore, the failure of the basis can take place due to two reasons one because it fails to be linearly independent or B fails to be spanning W. Now, B is already given to be a maximal linearly independent set. So, it cannot fail to be linearly independent because already linearly independent. So, therefore, the only way B can fail to be a basis is that it does not span W. Therefore, since B is linearly independent the only way B can fail to be a basis for W is by the span being not equal to W. So, that means the L B is in W, but not equal to W. So, let us now take L B. Now, L B is a subspace
of V it is sitting inside the subspace W and B is linearly independent set in L B these two we observe because now L B is a subspace by itself and B is sitting inside B is sitting inside w, uh, L B. So, B is a linearly independent set in W, but now we have got L B is not all of W and therefore, there is some vector let us draw the picture again. So, here is W here is B here is L B and L B falls short of W because we assume that B is not a basis and therefore, there is a vector x in W which is outside L B. So, x there exists x in W such that x does not belong to L B. Now, B is a linearly independent set this B is a linearly independent set in this subspace and x is outside that subspace and therefore, B together with x will still be a linearly independent set in W we have seen this before. So, therefore, B is a linearly independent set in L B which is contained in W and x is outside L B, but in W. Hence, B union x is a linearly independent set, which means B is a subset proper subset of the linearly independent set B union x and therefore, B is not a maximal linearly independent set it is not a maximal linearly independent set in W because we have embedded it in a bigger linearly independent set, but we started with a maximal linearly independent set we said let B be a max remember we started with the fact that B is a maximal linearly independent set in W and hence it is a contradiction contradicts this is a contradiction because we started with a yeah, ma maximal linearly independent set B and therefore, our assumption that B is not a basis is false and hence our assumption that B is not a basis is false. So, the conclusion we get now is the converse conclusion we have that B is maximal linearly independent set in W implies B is a basis for W. Previously we showed that if B is a basis then it is a maximal linearly independent set. Now, putting these two together putting by the two conclusions by these two conclusions we get B is a basis for W if and only if B is a maximal linearly independent set in W. So, this is a very important observation about basis. In other words, it is a sort of optimal size for a optimally sized linearly independent set. It is optimally sized sampling set because it is going to span the whole space. So, it is this property it will just make a note we will not prove this it is this interpretation
of a basis together with what is known as the zones lemma that assures us that every vector space has a basis and therefore, every subspace of a vector space has a basis. We will not go into the proofs of these uh, statements using Zorn's lemma, we will take them for granted. Now, let us look at some examples again. Let us look at F3 and we had the basis B E1 1 0 0, E2 0 1 0 and E3 is 0 0 1. We already seen and it is very easy to see that B is linearly independent. Now, suppose B 1 is any set in F 3 such that B is contained in B 1, but not equal to B 1 that is B is a proper subset of B 1. Therefore, there exists an x in B 1 minus B call this as x 1, x 2, x 3 and we have x is equal to x 1 e 1 plus x 2 e 2 plus x 3 e 3 and that implies that e 1 e 2 e 3 x is a linearly independent set all of them are in uh, sorry linearly dependent set and all of them are in B 1 and therefore, B 1 has a linearly dependent set inside it and therefore, B 1 is linearly dependent which says that anything bigger than B is linearly dependent and it is already linearly uh, uh, independent B and therefore, B is a maximal linearly independent. So, that we see that a basis has to be a maximal linear independent set. Now, let us look at the example of the matrices. Let us for simplicity look at F 2 by 3 the set of all 2 by 3 matrices. When we are looking at all the 2 by 3 matrices we had these matrices A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3. Remember these matrices A 1 1 has 1 in the 1 1 entry and 0 elsewhere a 1 2 has 1 in the 1 2 entry 0 elsewhere in general a i j has 1 in the i th row j th column and all other entries are 0. Then B is linearly independent and B 1 contains B means there exists a matrix which is in B 1 which is not in B and let A B a 2 by A B C D E F and as we have seen before A can be written as A A 1 1 plus B A 1 2 plus C A 1 3 plus D A 2 1 plus E A 2 2 plus F A 2 3 which means the matrices A 1 1 up to A 2 3 and A are linearly dependent and these are all in B 1 that says B 1 is linearly dependent. So, what we have is B is linearly independent by 1 and B cannot be embedded in a linearly independent set or anything bigger than B must be linearly dependent which is what is exactly meant by saying that B is maximal linearly independent. Let us now look at the example of the 
polynomials let us look at f x then we had the basis 1 x x squared etcetera x to the n recall we call p n as x to the power of n. Okay. So, the basis we can also write as p naught p 1 p 2 p n etcetera. Now, again as we have seen earlier many times b is linearly independent in b. Two, suppose we have a set bigger than b 1 in b and again therefore, there must be somebody in b 1 who is not in b they are all polynomial. So, there exists a p in b 1 minus b and since p is a polynomial. So, let p be equal to a naught plus a 1 x plus etcetera a k x to the power of k and that says p is equal to a naught p naught plus a 1 p 1 plus a k p k. Now, this says p naught p 1 etcetera p k p are all linearly dependent in b 1 and therefore, b 1 is linear if you set has a subset which is linearly dependent the whole set must be linearly dependent. Therefore, b 1 is linearly dependent and therefore, anything bigger than b is automatically linearly dependent and hence b is maximal linearly. Thus, we see that the basis is maximal linearly independent. Thus, the notion of a basis is in a sense an optimal sampling set. Okay. So, let us recollect that this is the most important aspects of basis. You can interpret it as a linearly independent set spans basis for v means spans v. So, basis for w means it is linearly independent w and spans w basis for v means linearly independent set in v and spans v or we can look at it equivalently as a maximal linearly independent set in w. However, recall that our idea was getting into a basis was to get an optimal or a reasonably meaningful sampling set. If you now look at the example of the polynomials even though we got to this notion of non redundant minimum requirement for spanning the space the set b we got 1 x x squared etcetera is an infinite set. So, we still have to deal with in certain uh, vector spaces an infinite sampling set. The easiest cases are those or the simplest cases are those where we can get finite basis because then we have a finite sampling set. So, this leads us to the notion of finite dimensional subspaces. We have not yet introduced the notion of the word dimension, but we will come to it shortly finite dimensional spaces. So, let w be a subspace of v and let w have a finite basis. So, we have a subspace which is having a finite basis then we say w is a finite dimensional subspace. If V itself has a finite basis <coughs> we say V is a finite dimensional vector space. So, we have the notion of a finite dimensional vector space and a finite dimensional subspace. We will be dealing 
mostly with these finite dimensional spaces in this course. Now, let us look at a finite dimensional space. So, let V be a finite dimensional vector space. What does this mean? This means there is a finite basis. So, let us call it let it be u 1, u 2, u n. Suppose there are n vectors which form a base. What does this mean? This u 1, u 2, u n are vectors in V they are linearly independent and they span V that means every vector in V is a linear combination that is u 1, u 2, u n or vectors in V they are linearly independent and they span V this is what we mean span V means everybody is a linear combination of this u 1, u 2. Now, suppose I have another set which has n plus 1 vectors. So, I have a basis which consists of n vectors. Now, I am looking at any set which has n plus 1 vectors. Our claim is the following. We claim B 1 must be linearly dependent. Why is this so? Suppose not, then B 1 is linearly independent. Now, look at we have all these vectors use, we now append the vector V 1. Since U 1, U 2, U n is a basis, V 1 can be written in terms of U 1, U 2, U n and therefore, v 1 u 1 u 2 u 1 will be linearly dependent since v 1 is a linear combination of u 1 u 2 u n since b is a basis. b is a basis everybody must be a linear. Now, we have seen last time that if we have a linearly dependent set you can knock off redundant information from scanning from the left and get a subset which still spans the same space. Now, when we scan this v 1 u 1 u 2 u n by from the left first we will be looking at v 1 we cannot knock off v 1 because v 1 alone is linearly independent being a part of a linearly independent set v 1. So, we cannot knock out v 1. So, we will be knocking out some of the u 1s. So, what we will get is by scanning from left we get let us call this set as S 1 we get a set B 1 which will have V 1 and a part of this B we will call it B 1 1 where B 1 1 is contained in B and therefore, which is spans same space as S. So, therefore, we have L S is equal to L B 1, but if you look at L S 1 the L S 1 already contains U 1, U 2, U n basis vectors who already span the whole space V. So, L s 1 will be V. So, L b 1 will be equal to V because L s 1 is V since u 1, u 2, u n basis vectors are already in S. So, we have got a subset of B 1 together with v 1 which forms a basis. Now, what we do is we will look at appending v 2 to this and then apply scanning. 
as before we get v2 v1 b21 another set we'll call it as b2 which spans again v continuing this way we will knock off the vectors of u at each stage at least one will be knocked out so at the rth stage we would have got v r v 1 v r v r minus 1 etc v 1 and we would have knocked off all the vectors from v 1 span v and since each stage we knock off one u vector maximum stage we require is or less than or equal to n and therefore, we have v r v r minus 1 v 1 they are part of a linearly independent set and they span v and therefore, they form a basis for v. Since they form a basis for v any vector must be a linear combination of them in particular therefore, v n plus 1 which is out none of these fellows is a linear combination of v r v r minus 1 v n which means that v 1 v 2 v n v n plus 1 must be linearly independent must be linearly dependent because v n plus 1 is a linear combination of the previous fellows this must be linearly dependent this is contradiction because we started with the hypothesis that suppose v 1 is linearly independent. So, therefore, this is a contradiction and hence we must have v 1 must be the set consisting of this v 1 v 2 v n plus 1 must be linearly independent. So, the conclusion that we have from this is that if v has a basis having n elements then any set having n plus 1 elements is linearly dependent this is a very important property. Using this property we will be able to show that once a vector space has a basis consisting of finite number of vectors then all bases will consist of finite number of vectors and all bases have the same finite number of vectors. This will lead us to the notion of dimension and we shall look at these aspects in the next lecture.